Hello everyone, I hope you don't think this is just another box drawing assembly language program demo, which was fun to do and I enjoyed it, but I got this idea from a title screen on a Commodore 64 game and I can't remember the game right now what it was, but what it had around the border was like, like what we're going to do in this video, an asterisk that was zooming around really quick around the outer edge of the border. And I thought it would be fun to sort of recreate that and play around with that concept a little in this video. At the time I was fascinated by it and I had Merlin 128 assembler on my Commodore 128 and I went ahead and I wrote a program to try to mimic it. And I remember how frustrated I was trying to do it. It just wasn't very easy for me at the time to, to do it. And I don't recall how successful I was and I don't have that source code anymore. But anyway, that's what we're gonna do in this program. So I hope you don't mind coming along with me for the ride. All right, so we're gonna to wanna to create a new assembler program. I'm gonna call it border effect. And I want it to start at memory location 2000. And we wanna cl clear the screen. And to do that, we're gonna to want to load the character that we wanna fill the screen with. In this case, I wanna put asterisks around. And asterisks are oops, character 42 or 2A. Forty-two. Load X with zero. Store it at four hundred, comma X. We're gonna make a loop here. Clear loop. Something like that. Oops, is that enough space? Yeah. And store it at 500 comma x, store it at 600 comma x, store it at 700 comma x, decrease x, branch if not equal to clear loop. For now, that'll be the end of our program. Now we realize when we do this, 400 takes you to 4 FFF, 500 through 5 FF, 600 through 6 FF, 700 through 7 FF. But the problem with that is that the screen ends, oops, I didn't need to do that. The screen ends at 7E5. So technically you really shouldn't be right overriding from E5 to 7FF. But uh, my understanding is the, those memory addresses, and I could be wrong, are, have to do with sprite, sprites. And since we're not using sprites, I'm not really gonna worry about that. So let's see what happens if it does clear the screen. Sys8192. Ah, there we go, we got all asterisks on the screen. Worked brilliantly. Now, the goal, that what I was trying to achieve was to actually just change the color and then go in a, a pattern around in a circle, not a circle, but a square, just follow the border of this, the outer edge of the square. All right, now that the screen is cleared, I wanted to be able to change colors. So I'm gonna create a constant here, like a maybe a red equal, what color is red? That's yellow. Maybe a black equal to zero. All right, let me look at the screen editor and just kind of describe what I'm trying to do. We're gonna to try to move color, to change the color starting on the top row going in this direction. And then on the bottom row, starting at the bottom, far right, at position 39 and moving backwards all the way. And instead of modifying the character data at 400, we're playing around with the color data, which starts at D800 for the top row. 
And then on the bottom row, it starts at dbc0. So we're not playing with the characters because we already have characters on the screen. We're going to use dbc0. So what I'm trying to do, I'm going to need a loop and I'm going to use the X register for the top row and the Y register for the bottom row. So we're going to load X with 0, load the Y register with 39. We're going to load the accumulator with the color, the, the first color we're going to display onto the screen. And this is where we'll need a label of some sort. And we're going to go ahead and store the accumulator at D800, comma, X. And, oh, that won't go when there's a label. And then we're going to store the accumulator also at DBC0, comma, X, comma, Y on this one, actually. So we're going to change the color of the 39th position on the bottom row. Now, this is where... After we do that, we need some sort of a, a delay right here. So I'm going to put in a sub called delay. And I've written a quick delay function that I'll throw in here in a minute. Then we're going to load the, the next color. Let's just call it the one that we have up there, red. And then, again, save it off in the same, the same two lines. We can actually copy those lines with D800, comma, X and dbc0 comma y now here's here's the part where you do the where we change the variables we're going to decrease the y register we're going to switch it down one at the same time we're going to increment the x register go to the next character because i want this to happen at the same time then we're going to compare the y register to zero if it's not equal to zero then we're going to branch up to the loop that we have up there. And then for now, um, we'll just return back to see, see, see if, we, if it works. But first, we're going to bring in the delay function that I've previously coded. And if we take a look at the code, you can play around with the speed here by adjusting x and y. All it's doing is wasting cycles, just decreasing x and y. I'm going to take this return statement out right here. This should do something it, just on the first, the top and bottom rows. Let's let's try. Let's see what it does. Ah. I need to go up. I need to go up one on the loop. Kind of work through it. Oh, that's pretty fast. Let's slow that down. Oh, like 175 or something like that. That should be pretty slow. But you kind of see the effect. See that? It's kind of cool, huh? And so you can see after that completes we want to do the le the left and the right borders. And to do that, we're going to want to continue the program. All right, so this is the same concept as going across the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen. Let's bring up the screen editor. Instead of just starting over here, going this way and going down this way, what we're wanting to do is start down here and come up and then start on the far right and come down. And in order to do that, I have, it's a little tricky, but I, I have a macro that I uh, wrote a while ago that will poke a uh, character onto the screen. If you say, um, it's called poke um, A, X, and Y. If the accumulator is loaded with 42 for an asterisk, and if you poke three comma zero, it would put something right there. If you poke three comma one, it'll put, put it there. 3 comma 2, 3 comma 4, and so on. Now I modified it a little. I called it poke color AXY because in this example, we're not we're not poking the screen, the character's memory, we're poking the, the color memory. And so I'm gonna throw that down here. 
So what it does, it's loading off of the high value off of this table down here and the low value from the map offset, the low value. So basically, if you have the A, whatever's in the A register, whatever's in the X, whatever's in the Y, that's what where it'll poke that color. And so that sets us up to write the loop part of the program. So again, we're going to start here. We're going to load. I'm going to use the X register uh, for the top right position, far right. And then the Y is set to zero. So we're all the way over to the right, very top row. We're going to load the color black. And then we're going to take those three, now that we have them, we're going to poke them onto the screen. Poke AXY, poke color AXY, and that will actually draw that color on the screen. So that's the top right character. Let's bring up the screen editor. So this will poke something over, over here, but we also want to poke something right here. Change the color on the bottom left. So we got something on the top right, we want something on the bottom left. And to do that, we're just basically you can copy copy these except changing the x position, the change this to a y. We're going to we're going to make the y 25 and the x 0 instead of yeah, we're going to we're going to keep it black, so I don't need this in there. That will change it to black for both of those positions. Then we're going to do this again, this whole thing again, but instead of being black, we're going to switch it to red. Again, this we're going to need the delay in between these. That will slow it down. Otherwise, it's just too fast. Now, we do need a loop because this is only doing this one time. And we're going to want the loop to, to jump all the way back up here. So let's do this one uh, loop, loop one. And here we're. We're doing some self-modifying code. We're going to want to increment this Y, the Y position right here. I'm going to call it Y value. We're going to want to increment that zero to be a one. So we're going to say increment Y value plus one. So with that, will, that won't change the instruction. It'll change this value here. So at the same time we're incrementing this position, we're also going to want to increment this one. So I'm going to call this one y, y value. And we'll also increment that one. So we're going to want to decrease the value of this one and the value of this one. So we just got to put some labels there. I'm going to call this one y value 1. And this one, y, y value 1. And we're going to decrease those. Decrease y value 1 plus 1. Decrease y, y value 1 plus 1. And then we're going to, the last thing we have to do is load the value. We're going to load y value plus 1. Make sure when this hits 25. I mean, we could have checked any we could have checked one of these for 0. But load y value plus 1. Load y. Compare y to 25. Branch if not equal. We need to have a loop. 
So I, we, won't, we won't be able to jump that. I'm going to have to change this label here. How about XX loop? And then we'll return. Oh, that, I know this is confusing, but what this should do is continue the line drawn, the color changing, going up the left side and, and down the right side, if I said that right. So let's test it out. So, okay, so let's try that again. Exactly what I was expecting. Oh, it didn't. Oh, oh, okay. Can't run it twice. Because of this self-modifying code, there's a, a bug right here. Um, we want to initialize these, these self-modifying code bits. So we want to load the Y with zero, store it, and Y value uh, plus one. Store it in yy value plus one, and then load load y with twenty five. Store store y in y value one plus one. Store y in y y value one plus one. Basically initializing uh, these these uh, four spots. So every time it runs, it has the proper values. That's the problem you run into with self modifying code. So let's um let's try that again see if we can run it twice. There we go. Now all we have to do is jump it back to the top. So if we have if we jump it all the way all the way up to here. main program just put a label up there so we jump weight all the way up we could clear the screen again but I don't think that's necessary so instead of returning and now it's just going to endlessly run main program and now it will run continuously when we run the program And then this is where you can start playing with the delay speeds just to see. I, I think it's fun to play around with that to see what it looks like if it's faster. So let's bring this down to where I had it, which I had around 50. Might be too fast. I think that's a little too fast, but... mesmerizing <laughs> and there's a good practice here would be to save your program before you lose it maybe put a comment up here 2020 All right, I think this is a good spot to create a new effect based on this. You could obviously, you could change the direction if you wanted to. There's a lot of ways you could tweak this straight off the bat here. But what we're going to do is do a new one. I'm going to call it border effect one or two, or I guess one for now. And... I want to copy copy this one into before I make any changes so I don't lose the changes and you can kind of see the progression as we go. One of the things I want to do, let's see, I guess I'd like to have a little more comments in here. There. Now, one of the ideas, so when we run this, I was thinking, oh, well, you know what? Wouldn't it be neat? So we have two lines going at the same time. 
what what if we were to do two more but going in the opposite direction and that's fairly easy to accomplish with this program we can start by simply adding a few lines uh, right here so let's see as this starts d800 let's also store it in d800 comma y so we'll put it over to the right side and then on this one let's do this one comma x and then the same thing down here either return, but let's increase the value of the loop. And so I doubled it up right here. So I'm doing two things at the same time. Let's see what that does. See that? It's a, a different effect altogether, huh? So let's see, to finish it, we have to do the, the vertical portion of it as well. All right, shouldn't be that difficult. Right here where we're, we're poking a, a position at 39 comma zero, we're gonna wanna also poke a position at zero comma zero. So we're gonna load x with zero, poke color axy. And same token here, we're gonna load where we're where we're loading the X register X register with a zero here, we're gonna to want to load it with the X register with a 39. Poke color AXY. And then here where we're loading the X register with a 39, we're gonna to want to load it with a zero here. And then poke color axy I know this could get complicated and um, very difficult to explain but just poking the the, the the opposite directions just the opposite sides the or the opposite half like, I don't know <laughs> so then on this last one where X is a zero we're gonna want to load X with a 39 which is the far opposite side color AXY and take out this RTS. I don't want it to return right here. Vertical jump to the main. Let's see if I achieve that goal here. Oh, we got an error. Now, because we've threw in all these uh, macros, they get expanded out. I can't just branch up to this loop spot up here. I have to jump up to it. So to do that, branch if not, branch if equal somewhere else, otherwise jump xx loop, and then otherwise continue down here. Basically, that does the same thing. It just takes a few more bytes to accomplish. It's a pain. And let's see how it looks. Uh, there we go. That's sweet, right? So then all we have to do is speed it up, you know, to have a nice little effect. Let's speed that up. So somewhere in the middle there, I like, I like to be able to see it. It almost looks like you're, you know, like it's a car racing, <laughs> racing around the screen or something. I, so I thought about even expanding the program, this program out even further. Let me put a name here. Border effect one or whatever. part two or something like that. All right, I hope it doesn't bother anyone that I have this label called red, but it's really yellow. 
I'm going to change it to color one and color two. And then what if we were to say, what if we were going to increment the colors? So we'll have to make these variables instead of constants, labels. So throw them down here at the bottom. Two. Oops, zero, seven. And then increment them. Oops, is that gonna work? Instead of the hashtags, we gotta take these off. And then increment them. Color one, increment, color two. Oops. See what that does. Every time it jumps through loop, changes colors. I, I like the when it matches the background color the best when it turns. And so we could change the background color to black and then have it do that. And of course we can increase the speed. And it looks like it's actually painting the border now at some at times, it rather than just moving around. So it's a completely different effect. So. I'm going to save that into color three. Background, back, border effect part three. So what we have on the previous. Yeah, so it's a completely different effect. So you can see just by modifying, taking it, just doing a minor thing to it, increasing the, the color value at each time you iterate through the loop. And you could try uh, decreasing it one, you know, increment one, decreasing the other, and, you know, come up with different color combinations even. Yeah, I thought about uh, expanding this out even further than I have now, but at the risk of this video <laughs> becoming way longer than it already is, uh, I I don't I don't know. I, I, my idea was, you know, hey, why not be able to have multiple of these going at the same time? So you have to rewrite the program completely, and then have them go in opposite directions, but have them in, have them in here in boxes, and and uh, maybe I can do that in a future video. But um, for for now, I was satisfied with this effect right here, and uh, I don't know. I hope. Maybe someone uh, watching this may have picked up something or may inspire someone to uh, try programming on the Commodore 64 for the first time even in assembly language. And um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching. So earlier in segment two, when we had all of these poke macros right here, and then when they expanded out, the, the program couldn't make this branch down here that, that was there, and I had to do the jump. So I wanted, what I wanted to do is try to change this to a, J, a jump subroutine and see if we can't, instead of using a macro, just make it a subroutine and see if we can get it to work that way. So let's see if that will compile just like that. Instead of using a macro, which this might not have been the best use case for a macro. And let's see if our program still runs. So now we can just change this to branch. Branch if not equal. XX loop. 
So this is an example where the macro was expanding out too many times and, and it really didn't need to be a macro since we weren't passing any parameters or anything like that. And it, the program code is just a lot cleaner like this.